Ohio State 44, Penn State 31. And the only reason that this was interesting, obviously the final score is incredibly different, but this was super tight in the fourth quarter. This game was 20-16 to 16 with less than 10 minutes left in the game. And Ohio State just went off. Uh, JT Tuimaloau was incredible. Um, Zone 6 jumped in on Tennessee. He said, yeah, they're playing great. I want to see how they do it on the road. Uh, agreed. Agreed. Uh, we saw him do it against LSU, who has looked pretty good. Uh, Athens might be a different beast. But regardless, uh, Ohio State, like C.J. Stroud had great numbers. Didn't really look right until the fourth quarter, right? And th- he seems to do this frequently. Um Ohio State did have a defensive touchdown in the game. Obviously, that helps out tremendously. Penn State ran 80 more plays. They outgained Ohio State by 30 yards. They had more first downs. Uh, Ohio State did have more yards per play. They had more yards per rush attempt, more yards per pass, etc. cetera. Um, PPA per play was made, it, more than double, uh, almost triple what Penn State did. Um, Penn State's success rate was better. Their passing down success rate was better. Uh, the the pro, the deal was JT to him a little while. like he was absolutely unbelievable. Let's uh, let's pull up his numbers on the day if we can. Um, he was just a complete wrecking ball. He had six total tackles, three of them solo, two sacks, three tackles for loss. He had uh, two interceptions. One of them that he returned for a touchdown. Uh, he had a forced fumble. I mean, he was. Everywhere, especially in that fourth quarter. He completely took over the ball game. And remember, this is the kid that committed late in the last cycle, heading into the 2021 season. He didn't really do anything last year. And obviously it takes a little bit of time to develop and whatnot, but you hadn't really seen a whole lot of out of, or a whole lot out of him this year, right? He hadn't really put himself on that big national stage like that. But man, he had a matchup and he exploited it. Uh, and and it was multiple. Like we we talked about Penn State's offensive line woes and how good are they? Um, Eighty two Atlantic says you put the games from last week in the description. Ah, you know what? I will uh, I will fix that here in a bit. I thought I fixed that last night, but regardless, this is interesting. Um, how good is this Ohio State defense? If they're giving up these kind of numbers to Penn State. How good are they really, right? You've got some pieces that are very dominant, but how good can they be for the rest of the season? Like you look at Penn State's numbers, and let's see, running the ball. Oh, here, hold on. We'll pull it back up over here. So on this, uh, we've got da, 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 six yards per play, which is pretty good. You got three yards per rush attempt. Eh, almost eight yards per pass. Um, Double O'Neal jumps in. Penn State ain't bad. Uh, agreed. But we did see Michigan just completely annihilate this team. And Ohio State didn't really do that. They had, they annihilated them in the fourth quarter. Ryan Day's play calling was really weird in this one. Like it, I, I'm not sure exactly what to make out of this. Yes, a win on the road is incredibly impressive. But... And you can't really compare game to game because the matchups are obviously different. But this one is just strange to look at because it, we've already seen Penn State be dominated. So, uh, here we go. It's zone six. Compared to last year, so much better. They're good, not elite. Yes, agreed on that. My gosh, last year was a complete debacle defensively for Ohio State. Um, double and nil. Michigan struggled for a long time with Michigan State yesterday. Yeah. That, see, that's the other part, and we're going to get to that one later on. But yeah, it, it's it's weird. I don't know what to make of Penn State. And I think that's my biggest issue with the Ohio State situation. I'll tell you this. Road games? I, well, I, how about this? Home games. It seems like there is something to home field advantage, maybe more so this year than we've had in the past two, three years, really. Uh, we had gotten to a point where it was almost NFL-like, where home field advantage didn't necessarily make that much of a difference. But there are some games this year that have absolutely been affected by home field advantage. Uh, and I need to dive into the numbers and see about you know spreads and all that kind of stuff. But it it certainly plays a part. Certainly plays a part. The fact that Tennessee got to go play LSU at 11 a.m. That's 
a little different than going to Death Valley at night, right? Going to play Penn State in, you know, a big noon kickoff may be a little bit different than going to play Penn State at night for a whiteout. So, regardless, Ohio State looked fantastic in this spot. Um, but, yeah, just dominating again, doing what they do. At, at this point, you just have to you got to keep winning. It's all about surviving until the end. Uh, Zone 6 said Penn State is a top 20 team. Uh, look at all the teams, 8 through 40, razor thin. Yeah, I agree with you. I agree with you 100% because it feels like everybody can beat everybody except for maybe the top teams. And even then, Ohio State was on the ropes. If you don't have JT2 and Maloa doing what he did yesterday, what ends up happening in that game? I know that when Ohio State uh, went down 20 to 16, or 21 to 16, whatever it was, when they went down, they came right back and scored very quickly. Trayvon Henderson took it to the house, right? When they, could Penn State have come right back down and scored? You know, obviously not because we saw it, but what do you do if you don't have that one guy that was dominating on defense? Uh, Double O'Neill said, no one in the Big Ten is beating Ohio State. I mean, I kind of said that last year. I don't know. We'll we'll see. I, I'm not going to say nobody is going to beat them. Uh, it certainly looks that way because they are ridiculous. Like, they are ridiculously talented, and when they put it together, they are unstoppable. But I have seen them not be unstoppable before, so I'm not going to go as far as to say that nobody's going to beat them. I'll, I'll say that. Um, they were They were in a weird situation yesterday for sure. Thanks for listening to Winning Cures Everything. Make sure and subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. And make sure to leave a nice five-star review. You can follow Gary on Twitter, at GaryWCE. And the show is at Winning Cures. Be sure to check out the merch in our web store and share the show. <laughs>